Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This video will be based on the topic of environmental laws, policies and strategies. In regards to our main issue on land pollution, we have identified the law of the Environmental Act 2000, which gives effect and provides a contributing factor to achieving the fourth national goal and directive principles on natural resources and environments of the Constitution, and also to regulate the impacts on the environment of development activities in order to promote sustainable development of the environment and people's economic, social, and physical well-being by preserving the life-supporting capacity of the aspects of the biosphere for present and future generations and avoiding, correcting, and mitigating any negative environmental effects of activities. This Environmental Act 2000 is for the sole purpose of Section 53, Subsection 1 of the Constitution, where its purpose for this Act permits the protection of the environment from environmental harm and to control, prevent, and for the minimization of the contamination of the environment. The objective of this law relating to our issue comes in three aspects to achieving, which are the first is to regulate activities that may have a negative impact on the environment in an open and transparent manner. The second is to ensure that consultation occurs with persons and bodies who are likely to be affected by decisions made under this Act. And the third is to provide a means for carrying out obligations under any international treaty or convention relating to the environment to which Papua New Guinea is a party. So, how can these objectives be achieved? The environment of Papua New Guinea will be protected through a process of setting sustainability goals and providing the resources to enable and guarantee their observance. This process is to be achieved by firstly applying the environmental objectives to level one activity by means of environmental codes of practice, environment protection orders, cleanup orders, and emergency directions. Secondly, applying the environmental objectives to level two and level three activities by means of conditions in environmental permits and the negotiation of environmental improvement plans and environmental management programs. And lastly, requiring proposed activities involving matters of national importance to undergo a process of public and detailed consideration of environmental implications through a process of environmental impact assessment. The failure to comply with the general environmental duties may be enforced by number one, an environmental protection order, number two, a cleanup order, or number three, an emergency direction. Causing environmental harm means that a person is guilty of an offense if he or she unlawfully causes environmental harm through noise, dust, odor, electromagnetism, or litter, an unhealthy offense or unsightly condition caused by a contaminant or any other way prescribed by regulation. The penalty is a fine of up but not exceeding 20,000 and the default penalty is a fine of up but not exceeding 2,000. The Act is implemented through multiple environment regulations under the Department of Environment and Conservation through the Conservation and Environment Protection Authority, or CEPA. According to Engi 2022, the purpose and the aims of the Act are to prevent pollution and damage to the ambient environmental quality by regulating development activities in order to achieve them. He further stated that the legal tools provided under the Act for the protection and management of the environment include regulations, environmental permits, and enforcement. He further mentions that level one environmental impacts are usually not taken seriously as the environmental impacts are not very effective. This means to say that level one activities are not to be considered involving CEPA, however, they should still be carried out in accordance with the regulations of the Act. Thus, authorities still must apply for an environmental permit for level one activity, which requires the completion of two application forms, the environment permit application to discharge waste 
and the guidelines for submission of an application for an environment permit to discharge waste. To furthermore clarify, according to the University of Melbourne 2020, in Papua New Guinea, the emendation and regulation of the Environmental Act 2000 form the principal legislative structure for environmental protection, including the protection of social and physical well-being of people, providing constitutional requirements and regulating the environmental impacts of development activities and the management of water resources. The Act is an omnibus stated that incorporates environmental protection, environmental impact assessment, pollution control, and waste management, as well as acknowledging the role of customary law and land ownership. Waste disposal appears to be frequently confused with environmental protection, impact assessment, advanced controls, and pollution and discharge controls. The lack of a clearly defined legislative goal for waste management and minimization in the Act makes assessing the legislation's effectiveness in relation to waste management outcomes in the country difficult. It also recognized that the Act ensures responsible for national environmental policies such as waste management or reduction. The central legislation, the Environment Act of 2000, covers many aspects of environmental regulation and establishes lofty goals. It aims to carry out a wide range of environmental protection and pollution control functions and responsibilities. Waste management is mentioned in the Act, but it appears to be overshadowed in this framework. There have been several legislations affecting waste governance in PNG since the year 2000 when the Environment Act was established. Amendments to these laws were made in the years 2010, 2012, 2014, and 2015. Under these amendments, these are the regulations made to fulfill the Act. Environment Permit Regulation 2002, Environment Ozone Depleting Substances Regulation 2007, Environment Control of Biodegradable Plastic Shopping Bags Regulation 2011, Environment Registration of Contaminants and Hazardous Contaminants Regulation 2011. The National Environmental Legislation through these regulations can enable other levels of government to enact bylaws and regulations. If there is no supporting regulation in place, it will constrain the ability of other levels of government to implement the laws effectively. We can draw from it that the Environmental Act 2000 has been enforced and is still valid. However, the implementation of the Act through land pollution caused by dumping, littering and betel nut spittle has not been fully accomplished. At the time the Constitution established the Act, the national government mainly focused this Act on the mining and natural oil sectors and climate change for that reason. Most of the policies are directed towards the implementation of guidelines to protect, minimize effects, and maintain practices to prevent climate change. The Papua New Guinea government has failed to incorporate and develop strategies, policies, and laws to address land pollution. Therefore, it still remains a challenge of the Environmental Act. Air, water, and land pollution are environmental issues which need laws to guide the management and use of its resources for the prospectus future. Remember, a small problem can lead to a big one. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell for more videos.